while presidents, prime ministers and policy makers around the world hope they've somehow managed to avoid a total financial meltdown, lawyers and regulators are starting to take action against some of the bankers they say are responsible. I think the banks believed they were above the law, and I think it's clear that they thought they could get away with anything, and apparently they did. In this BBC programme, we hear what some of these investigations claim to have uncovered, and we delve deep into the complex financial engineering bankers created to fuel the housing boom to reveal yet another massive potential source of losses for the financial system, a time bomb so big it could trigger another bust. The reason we're in a state of panic now is no one knows where the bottom is, and the bottom could be very, very deep. It's a mess. It's a mess. A lot of people losing their job, losing their home, losing everything. Mike's shoeshine stall on 7th Avenue, New York, is right outside what used to be the headquarters of Lehman Brothers, the American financial giant which declared itself bankrupt last month. I worry about the working guy, you know, who got that pension and all, and getting screwed, you know. Like most of his customers, Mike blames Dick Fold, Lehman's chief executive officer, for the 150-year-old institution's collapse. I'm glad the CEO gone, but I'm not glad the worker. You know what I mean? The CEO, happy to see him go. Yeah. Chief exec. Yeah, get rid of all of those. Let's keep the little guy, man, the one that they doing the work. Committee will come back to order. Richard S. Fold, Jr., Chairman and CEO of Lehman Brothers. He's been the chairman. Earlier this month, Dick Fold appeared on Capitol Hill in Washington to face members of Congress fired up by widespread anger against bankers among their constituents. Your company is now bankrupt. Our economy is in a state of crisis, but you get to keep $480 million. I, I have a very basic question for you. Is this fair, Mr. Chairman? Dick Fold told the committee he hadn't made quite that much money. I think for the years that you're talking about here, I believe my cash compensation uh, was close to $60 million, which you have indicated here. And I believe the amount that I took out of the company over and above that was, I believe, a little bit less than $250 million. Still a large number, though. Still a large amount of money. You have a $14 million oceanfront home in Florida. You have a summer vacation home in Sun Valley, Idaho. I saw a brief clip of it in the TV. He seemed to have a difficult two hours. It's a typical reaction. He's trying not to say very, very much. Dean Morris had a good reason to look in on Dick Fowl's interrogation. He's in charge of a UK pension scheme and is also the chief complainant in a lawsuit against Lehman's accusing the bank of deliberately misleading investors. If there has been any alleged wrongdoing by Dick Fold or any of the directors in the company, I would hope that uh, they would go through a, a legal process to have them penalised to get their comeuppance. The building where Lehman's used to be is this huge skyscraper right in front of me, in the heart of Manhattan, just down from Theatreland. All the Lehman signs are gone now, and instead you see Barclays because they bought bits and pieces of what was left. But it's what happened in the weekend that Lehman's came to grief that is really most startling. On the Saturday morning, as the bank was struggling to survive, its losses were assessed at around $30 billion. By the Sunday night, the same weekend, its losses were assessed at $80 billion, $50 billion more, and the bank was forced into bankruptcy. But that huge difference in the assessment of how deeply Lehman was in the hole is the most graphic example of how little anyone really seemed to know about what was going on inside this pillar of America's financial aristocracy. With a complex bank like Lehman's, it's never easy, especially in the final stages of a collapse, to be 100% precise about the value of the loans on its books. On Capitol Hill, Dick Fold told sceptical politicians that he was in no way to blame for his bank's collapse. The crisis in confidence that permeated the markets led to an extraordinary run on the bank. In the end, despite all of our efforts, we were overwhelmed. Did you mislead your investors? And I remind you, sir, you're under oath. No, sir. We did not mislead our investors. Uh, and to the best uh, my ability at the time, given the information that I had, 
We made disclosures that we fully believed were accurate. But to the lawyers now targeting Lehman's, Dick Fulls' denials about misleading investors don't wash. They say fuzzy accounting is part of a pattern going back two years, with top executives time and again painting a falsely rosy picture of Lehman's financial condition. When a company intentionally misrepresents its financial statements, which caused its price to go up, and then subsequently comes down because they disclosed all those positive statements were false, that's fraud. Robert Roseman is part of the team of American-based lawyers seeking to prove that Lehman's directors knowingly misled shareholders about the state of the bank. The reality is that they had much more subprime exposure than what they uh, publicly portrayed, and eventually when everything fell apart, it was basically a house of cards. The company had to write down a tremendous amount of monies, and which caused the price of the stock to collapse. Like most of the steadily growing number of cases against the banks, the Lehman's action is still at an early stage and will no doubt be strenuously defended. But some investigators have already got a result. In Boston, Massachusetts, just up the coast from New York, state regulators have been investigating Merrill Lynch, another once proud American banking giant forced into a shotgun takeover on the same weekend that Lehman's went bust. Here, investigators are set out to show that Merrill had sold complex financial products to individuals and to cities, which they described as super safe, but which collapsed in value the moment the credit crunch began to bite. Faced with evidence gathered by the Massachusetts team, Merrill agreed to a multi-million dollar settlement. I think the banks believed they were above the law. They put their profits above their own customers repeatedly. And I think it's clear that they thought they could get away with anything, and apparently they did. Massachusetts Secretary of State William Galvin, the state's most senior law official, says he's proud of the investigation into Merrill Lynch and of the settlement achieved. He says in bank investigations across America, a pattern is beginning to emerge. We have been able to uncover sufficient evidence in a number of cases that indicated the upper echelon of the industry knew there were high risks here. We've seen email evidence. Indeed, we've taken testimony where some of these individuals were selling their own stakes in these things because of personal concern about the instability of the marketplace. There was a conspiracy of silence to continue this show. And as a result, we've come up with this incredible mess. I don't think a prosecutor is going to have much difficulty in finding ample opportunities to prove that the level of knowledge was here. And how serious an offense is that here in the U.S.? Well, you can go to jail. And I think in this instance, the American public is going to demand it. I think the American public is going to demand criminal prosecution.